you've got to take a lot of factors into account when you're looking at pine forests. Number one, there's a lot of different kinds of pine trees. Number two, some pine trees are thicker than others. Uh, number three, sometimes the woods around a pine forest is real open. Sometimes it's real thick. Sometimes there's better cover in the woods versus the pine trees. And a lot of it has to do with time of the year. Pine trees are a huge draw when the leaves fall off of all the other trees. Pine trees are about cover. It's about security. They're not a huge draw for food. They're going to use pine trees a lot like they use cattails. Or a lot like they use thick heavy grass and brush or dogwood. They're going to look for those little points. They're going to look for those little islands. They're going to look for those little openings. They're going to look for that cover within. And they're going to look for areas where a buck can get his antlers through the brush and still get back in there to cover. So that it's not too thick. So in today's video, let's take a quick look at patches of pine trees. It makes a big difference whether the pines are mature or young pines. Young pines are thicker. They got good undergrowth. Uh, they got better cover, better thermal cover. Or good, you know, thick pines are good in winter. Uh, they stay warm. Bucks can get underneath them. They hold the snow. You know, they can get into dry spots and bed down underneath those pines. Um, but, you know, I guess it's kind of like uh, cattails or anything else or corn. Everybody thinks they bed in the middle of those pines, you know, when they have that thickness. Right. And they don't. Uh, the mature bucks bed more on the edges or where there's an opening in the middle of the pines. Sometimes you can look at an aerial and you can you can zoom in on pines, and you can see openings with uh, grass in them and stuff. That's the stuff I would key in on. It's kind of like a marsh. You're going to look for little shapes in the outside of the pines. You're going to look to the downwind side because you're going to bet on the edge. Right. Looking out, wind to back. You're going to smell if anything's coming through the pines at them. Looking out. So they're going to use features like points of pines coming out so they can sit in the tip and have a radius to see around. Right. So okay, that made that made sense to me. It, it, so, in a so people get the distinction in a mature pine forest, you're going to have growth that's going to be up high. You may have five to eight foot clearance from the bed of the floor up to the the top of the pines, and that's going to be. I mean, all of us have walked through areas like that. That's going to be wide open. Yep. It's going to be hard to hold bedding. And typically, there's not a whole lot of browse that grows on the floor of that either. Correct. Um, but an immature pine forest where the cover is lower to the ground is going to be very similar to what we see in dogwood and cattails where Correct. you're going to have little pockets in the middle of it and there's going to be access trails and so they'll use that thicker cover so if you're hunting a big woods area you can look for those pine groves that meet that those characteristics right what attracted me to this spot is these tight little small pines and when I got in here there's just a little spot that's only a foot or two higher in elevation. And right away I thought there'd be a bed here. And sure enough, there's a big bed here. There's rubs right in the bed. And there's a fresh bed right here. It looks like we just kicked one out of it. This is definitely being used by a good buck. That buck we're after in here, uh, my camera has only picked up him and one little tiny buck. So I'm pretty sure anything that's got a decent rub in it is him. So then the other kind of pine is uh, like a tamaracks, mm -hmm. and people shouldn't get that com confused with like a white pine that grows on dry land. Tamaracks grow down in the water. Right. So tamaracks are more of a northern thing up, you know, Wisconsin and above. But tamaracks, I mean, will be growing in amongst grass and stuff. So it looks like great terrain. And sometimes it can be if it's really thick and it's the only wet area or it's a small area. Every hump underneath a tree will have a bed under it, right. wherever it's dry. But in those big expanses of uh, tamaracks, you don't see them out in the middle of them again. You see them on the edges and stuff. Even though there's grass and stuff out there, because there ain't much else. And they don't have the, uh, the cover that like a white pine has. They're, they have a lot less uh, foliage on them. Foliage underneath. Yeah. You know. When you get up into the north woods, I've noticed that there's differences in tamarack swamps. I've seen tamarack swamps that are 
like real grassy at the bottom. The trees are spread out and it's not really underwater. It's just low and spongy. And you really, in that situation, can see a ghost down. Sometimes there ain't much for deer activity anywhere in there. Sometimes there is. But the better tamaracks are the ones that are in water. There's little humps sticking up. And the trees are growing out of the humps. And there's a mixture of dogwood, heavy brush, thick tangles in with those tamaracks. There's another bed right there. You see it even takes the shape of a deer. It's been used so many times. And it's out here where the water is almost over my boots. And you see how at the base of those trees it forms a little island where the deer can stay dry. And then what you'll find is every one of those humps under a tamarack will have a bed on it. And some of them will be worn to the ground. But what you're going to find is the bigger bucks aren't out in the middle of them. They're going to be on those edges. They're going to be in those land features. Those isolated hardwood islands, the edges of them. Um, a lot of times you'll find a food source adjacent to uh, that tamarack swamp. 100 or 200 yards in. At first transition on that tamarack swamp, up on those humps, you'll find some of the best bedding. And to get to that food source, they might not do it in daylight, that 100 yards, but if you can creep just inside of there and get them when they come off of those beds, you can do pretty well. Everything in here is about a foot deep of water, except for little high spots where the beds are. Oh. Well, that was a quick video, but I hope it got you thinking. Any questions, any comments, put them below. I always read them all. Thanks for watching, and if you want to keep seeing the videos, click the subscribe. See ya.